Pie charts are the simplest and clearest way to present a single set of data. But there are tricks to make them even clearer and traps resulting into messy results. Hi, this is Les from Power Training, where I share my decades of experience with you for free. With this tutorial, I'm going to make you a pie chart wizard. If you've come to solve a specific problem, use the chapter guide to jump to the video chapter for a specific solution. To take full control of pie charts, buckle in and let's power up. I'm demonstrating on a Windows computer with the latest Office 365. But if you're a Mac user, there's going to be some subtle differences and I'll show them along the way. First off, almost all the changes will require the use of the Chart Design Context Aware menu, which only appears when the chart is selected. Watch as it appears up here when the chart is clicked and disappears when I click off the chart. So always make sure the chart is clicked first, so just in case the Chart Design Context Aware menu is not displayed. Let's start off with the Quick Layout tool. The drop down dialog box shows seven different preset styles. As I hover my mouse over the selections, I see a variety of choices. And in the Windows View version, it's going to show a preview live on the screen. But for our Mac users, you're going to have to click the choice to see the results. Some of the quick layouts will remove the legend and put in the series title and percentages or on the inside, or in a variety of other variations. I'm going to select layout number four, which will result in showing both a legend and putting the series labels next to or inside the slice, depending on how it fits, plus the actual dollar number with the currency, not percentage, formatted as opposed to that percentage of total. This is a great start, but we can format the chart using the Chart Style tool faster. Click the Chart, then Chart Design, and preview the variety of content items to include. But this time, we get an array of stylistic looks. Note, the same 12 style choices will be shown on the Mac, but without a live preview. Still, no matter which one you do select, it's click and presto. This time, the percentages are inside the slices and the legend on the right, with some stylistic boxes and some font enhancements. However, here's an advanced tip. Once a style is selected, and if you go back a second time, some of the settings remain fixed, such as in this case, the outside legend and the percentages on the inside, but we're presented with more stylistic choices with these set of parameters from the first selection. So they're carried over and we're presented with even more. If we go back to the before version and hover over the choices, only a few of them have the percentages inside and now selecting the same second from the right for the before version, we get different results. So the lesson is select one design that is close to what you want, then roll the dice and go back and relook at more variations that are centered around your earlier choice. Speed formatting is nice, but you came here to go deep into advanced pie charts. So let's take complete control. Before we can control specific elements, we must know how to add and remove elements. Once again, with the chart selected and the chart design context aware menu clicked, we can go to the Add Chart Element here. We have three categories of Title, Labels, and Legend. And within each category, we have multiple choices. For the Legend, if we like to turn it on, is all about the location in relationship to the pie. Now, if we return back to Add Chart Elements, and now Data Labels, we have not only location choices, but we can stack all the variations on, such as data callouts, 
that will also add a focus box behind the label location selected. One interesting choice is the best fit, which will let PowerPoint try its best to locate inside or outside the pie slice. Let me come back to the last item of legend and instead show how we can change the color scheme. As always, using the chart design ribbon menu, we can select a new color scheme, but it is only for this specific chart, not the full presentation. However, it is governed by the overall design selected for the color scheme. See our tutorial to better understand PowerPoint color schemes. In a few moments, I'm going to show you how to manually change colors for individual elements or pie slices. But let's return back to add chart element and chart title. Other than turning it off, there's only two choices of above chart or centered overlay. While not obvious here, the above will always have a separation space between the pie and the title, but the overlay will get closer and sometimes even hover over the top of the pie chart. However, we have more controls, so let's go ahead and dig deeper. First off, we need to reveal the format chart pane on the right side of the screen. The format chart pane is where the advanced changes are made. This can be done three ways. The format chart context menu, or better yet, select the chart and hit control plus the number one, or the best, which I'm doing right here, is just double click on a chart element. And all the full control choices pop up on the right side. Since I double clicked on the title, we open up the format chart title. If you need more fundamental help with accessing and understanding this tool, do pause and watch our parts of a pie chart intro tutorial listed above. Let's explore our controls. Since we start on the title, we can change the solid fill color to blue and no, we're not changing the font color but the whole title text box background color. If we had wanted to change the actual text color, then that would be done in the home menu where all the font formatting controls reside. Look at how we're able to apply the same concept to any of the chart elements, such as the call out boxes. We'll see more about the format pane, but back to the title. Other formatting to the text box would be lines around the box, both color and size. The automated PowerPoint choices are limited for the placement, but once clicked and make sure it's just the title and not the whole chart as I did here, you can grab an edge and drag it to almost anywhere within the chart area. To do more, go back to the chart format pane and see that with the title selected, we have three sub formatting icons. The size and properties icons let us do more enhancements, such as changing the orientation of the title, or if we select the effect icon, we can now add some wild enhancements, such as glow. Now that we know of the chart properties pane, it's important to understand what elements can be changed. All of these are selectable and changeable elements in the chart. Do see our full tutorial on the anatomy of a pie chart to examine each element and the settings. Look for the link in the description below. There, you will see almost all of the settings, but let me continue our guide to some of the most important features for advanced pie charts, starting with the individual pie slices. Select the chart and then click a second time on the slice that you want to control. See the three selector circles around just the rent series to show that it's selected. Now it's just as simple as using the format data point pane on the right, clicking the pouring paint can and changing the color just for what we've selected and only that slice. Do note that we quickly use the solid purple color, but all the other ones were pre-formatted from our earlier preset design 
and use the elements of a gradient fill, which you can do too, but it's going to require much more time and effort. Unless you use one of the preset gradient fills offered by PowerPoint. If we want a more targeted focus on just the one rent element, it's a simple click and drag to any degree you wish. Then to add more focus, go to the effect icon and try on something like glow. There are more effects, but let's save them for our final exercise of a speed format project in around 60 seconds at the end of this tutorial. Moving on to the pie rotation. Sometimes the labels collide with the title, or we want to focus on a key item by rotational position. To accomplish this, you need to select the series or even just a single data point and go to the data series icon. There you will find angle of first slice. Don't worry. This will rotate more than just the first slice. Move one slice and they all rotate. Click and drag or increment the percentage to rotate the slices of the pie. Here we move the rent callout box off the title at the top and rotate it to the left side. And since we're here, just below, we can explode the whole collection of the pie pieces if we have the whole chart series selected. But too much, and in my opinion, it just looks strange. Let's pause for a moment and discuss the good and the bad of pie charts. Pie charts are excellent for a single set of data and best used if for a limited or smaller data sets. In our example of a small data set, we instantly can see that the category of rainy days is the fewest of the groups, followed by a larger percentage of cloudy days and that sunny days are more than both combined. However, with the larger data set, we have to look longer and harder, and we may still struggle to know if there are any more high school students compared to graduate students. Can you tell? So consider limiting the use of a pie chart to smaller data sets. And as an alternative, look for our understanding the 27 different pie chart video to see more about displaying larger data sets. But if we're forced to use a large data set with our pie chart, we could go in and add some visual helpers such as data labels. And then we do see that we have more high schoolers at 250 compared to 180 graduate students. But we can do better with larger numbers data sets. Here's the first issue, overlapping labels. How to make them fit. This layout outside is not bad, but the word kindergarten is word wrapped. Let's try some variations under add chart elements and data labels. The inside does not work, nor outside text. Back to best fit, it's okay, but not perfect. And does mess up elementary now, in addition to kindergarten. So here is the first trick. Try and rotate the angle of the pie. For some scenarios, this may solve the problem, but not here. So trick number two, Stretch the whole chart canvas wider, but there may not be enough room to stretch. So trick number three is to select the offending label, then go to the home ribbon menu and shrink the size of the label with a smaller font. Here, I am shrinking the collection of all the labels. If you want to just shrink one label, select the label, which selects all of them, and then go back and click a second time on just the item that you want to change. Target the shrinking to match that one without it being too extreme. Another great pro trick is sorting the data by size. This is both an elegant method and a great enhancement for your viewers 
to see the total sorted. At the moment, the series numbers are scattered haphazardly around with no organization. To make this change, click the chart, then the chart design context aware menu, and finally edit data. With the Excel data window now open, just right click on the shaded range and choose sort. It doesn't matter if you choose small to large or the other way around as the single set of data numbers will all end up in the same order, just sorted either clockwise or counterclockwise. And instantly our large data set is much cleaner and clearer of what's the largest slice and which are the smallest categories. Since we opened up the data series Excel sheet, it does bring up the potential of missing data. Look at this pie chart. It looks perfectly fine, but it's totally wrong. Elementary grade students is not the biggest category. Why? Because PowerPoint has failed to show all the data points. Some are missing from our chart. Look, when we open up the data sheet, but this time using select data action icon, see how it only has three data series of toddlers, kindergartens, and elementary, but we're missing four other categories of data. This dialog pop-up menu looks crazy scary here on Windows and also on the Mac. But don't worry about that. Just click on the actual mini Excel data sheet. There, you'll see the dotted outline around our three data sets, and it's excluding the bottom four. The fix is easy. Click and highlight the whole range of labels in column A down to the bottom of column B. Click OK and the selection dialog box and close down the Excel sheet. And it's fixed. Always watch out and double check your work. It is extremely embarrassing to be standing in front of your boss and someone points out that your chart is wrong. So be careful and check and double check. And a new problem, not missing data, but missing text. It comes down to two questions. One, are data labels turned on? And two, if they are on, what is the color compared to the background? Watch how the label text disappears if the color is turned to white to match the background. Now they're invisible, but you see the text boxes areas are showing when highlighted. Also, the location matters. These white colored labels are visibly missing unless they go back and change their location to center and side. So just be aware of the text color and the matching background color. Another warning, spelling. As I preach in my other tutorials, an excellent presentation can tarnish your professional reputation by being filled with just a few spelling mistakes. And yes, PowerPoint does do spell check, but not in charts. Look at rent. It has too many N's and car has too many R's. But PowerPoint spell check gives you the all good. But PowerPoint is wrong. It does not spell check inside your data tables. So do proofread. And if you have an issue, it's back to chart design and edit data where you go in and fix the mistakes by hand. We earlier explored the complexities of large data sets, but here's a matching issue. Too many small number data items. Take a look here at the top of our chart. It's hard to understand the relationship between toddlers and kindergarten because the data numbers are too small compared to the other pie slices. The pie slices are just very thin. We could click and drag out the slices if we wish to highlight a point or better yet, we can switch to a new data pie chart, the breakout chart. To change the chart type, click the chart, select chart design and look for change chart type. Now go to the pie group, select bar of pie. I prefer this over pie of pie, which just shows a smaller pie chart 
for the breakout. I like the bar as it's emphasizing that we're looking at a subset of categories. Now, right out of the box, this looks strange. The giant red breakout is dominating the screen. I like the use of bar up high to spotlighting the data points, but they're too small to see. So we're not focusing on the right items here. Let's look how to select what goes to the left big pie and what goes to the right bar. Select a data series, all or just one, it doesn't matter. Then in the chart design pane on the right, go to the last icon of the data series. In there, you can try on some of the presets. Here, we have split by position so that all the right side slices are combined into the other category and split out into our bar on the right. For this data set, not very helpful. But if I change it to value, it appears to become even more useless. The reason is we need to set the separate number limit of showing all the data below. Here, the value set up one and none of our data series are below that one student. So nothing shows. If I change it to 60, then we get two groupings. But this requires us to know the precise number of our underlying data. And if the data table changes, it can mess up our visual chart in the future. And then there is percentage value. This choice is OK, as you can experiment with the percentage without knowing the actual precise values to see the result. It works. However, to take full control, use custom. And so now you can click on the slice and assign it to the pie on the left or the bar on the right. When I'm done, I now have my two smallest groupings in the bar, but I will often shrink down the size of the bar to indicate that the other category is just a smaller subset of the larger categories in the pie. Although in this example, it might be just a little too small. We just changed the layout of the chart to a bar of pi, but there are several other layouts. Let's experiment with the same data, but transform the look. Starting with going from one dessert to another, pie to donuts. Select the target chart, click chart design, and then change chart type action icon. Then go to the pie chart and find donut. Basically, the donut pie chart is just a stylistic choice with the hole in the middle. All of our earlier tricks will work with this version. But let's repeat the process to get fancier with a 3D look. Repeating the same steps to find a 3D pie layout, we get a underwhelming 3D pie. But don't worry. We can easily shine up by using the pre-made chart design looks that we explored earlier. As I hover the mouse, we get previews of some of the more elegant looking 3D pies. They have depth and sparkle without being too cheesy. One last project to pull everything together that we've learned in a fast one minute format of a basic pie chart with a bonus tip at the end. Start the timer. Step one, select the chart. Step two, go to the chart design and preview the various pre-made layouts. Remember Mac users, you need to click to see the results. Focus on both the look and the items displayed for labels and legend. Step three, open up the data table and check for spelling and sort the data for ease of understanding. Step four, Go back and adjust any individual elements, such as switching to call out labels, and in this case, removing the legend. Step five, rotate the pie to add some balance to the overall look of the slide. Step six, for some extra bonus tweaks, separate the slices out just a bit and consider adding the effect of 3D formatting. This choice is not making a 3D pie as before, but adding some subtle 3D sculptural look at the edges for a more 
elegant look. And there you go, a cool pie chart reformatted in around one minute. Want more PowerPoint charting tutorials? Explore the full set of our Power Up free training for everything about PowerPoint at our website and go to our next tutorial called Understanding 27 Different PowerPoint Charts. Until next time, go power up.